Welcome to Electron Line. Now let's find the derivative of the inverse hyperbolic cosine. Again, we have the definition here of the inverse hyperbolic cosine to be the natural log of x plus the square root of x squared minus 1. So taking the derivative of the inverse hyperbolic cosine is the same as taking the inverse of that expression, the natural log of x plus the square root of x squared minus 1. So let's go ahead and do that and see what we get. Well, first of all, the derivative of a natural log is 1 over that. So this becomes 1 divided by x plus the square root of x squared minus 1 times the derivative of that expression. And the derivative of that will be 1 plus, here, the derivative of this will be 1 half times the quantity x squared minus 1 to the minus 1 half power times the derivative of what's inside the radical, which is times 2x. And then when you look at that, you say, well, let's rewrite that to make it a little bit easier. We can see that this 2 will cancel out with that 2 right there. And that means that this is equal to 1 over x plus the square root of x squared minus 1 times, and here we end up with 1 plus x divided by the square root of x squared minus 1. Let's put that inside parentheses. And now what's inside parentheses, we're going to write that over a common denominator. So this becomes 1 divided by x plus the square root of x squared minus 1 times, and writing this over a common denominator, this becomes the square root of x squared minus 1 plus x divided by the square root of x squared minus 1. And then you realize what's in the numerator here is exactly the same as what's in the denominator there, just in reverse order. So this cancels out with this. That means that this is equal to 1 over the square root of x squared minus 1. So this is now the derivative of the natural log of this expression, which is the same as the derivative of the inverse cosine of x. So therefore, we can say that the derivative of the inverse hyperbolic cosine of x is equal to 1 over the square root of x squared minus 1. And therefore, we can also conclude that then the integral of 1 over the square root of x squared minus 1 dx is going to have to be equal to the inverse hyperbolic cosine of x plus a constant of integration. All that realizing, of course, that x will take on values greater than or equal to 1 because that is definitely a requirement for the hyperbolic cosine of x. And that's how it's done.